Sorry, that made me laugh. <laughs> hey, welcome to, welcome to Rescued by Dragons. Seven friends who want to share how much fun they have playing Dungeons and Dragons with the tens of people that follow us across the internet. <laughs> so, uh, that many? <laughs> I'm, I'm patting the numbers. It's the seven of us, my mom, my dad, and my sister. <laughs> right, right, right. Hi, uh, Kellen family. <laughs> <laughs> and my mom who listened once and asked me why I was wasting my time. Uh, <laughs> that's not true. She hasn't listened. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah. there's no way. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we'll just... Actually, uh, one announcement. We, as of this recording, we are, for the first time we've been doing podcast videos, we are current. That means we are posting the same week we record. Um, we are going to try to be consistent, uh, but since we are a gaming group and we all have other mundane, not as fun lives, well, I don't, but <laughs> um, we will you know, try to be consistent on uh, what day we post, but please follow us on the social medias and we'll be posting when uh, each new episode is up. Uh, we try to record Mondays and post by Wednesday, but saying that this it's is tuesday, tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> but it's tuesday so things happen <laughs> so yeah You're follow welcome. us on the socials and uh we'll let you know when when something's up um facebook and twitter and instagram and you can find those links on rescuedbydragons.com or in the uh notes below the youtube video here um let me see so that's it so we will just jump right in uh, what were you guys doing? All right, so last week, uh, the DMV triumphantly returned to Dark Brew's Rest. Uh, you delivered the bad news to uh, Henny uh, that someone named H. Dark Brew was trying to have Ovin killed. Uh, she confessed that that was her, she was worried that that was her brother who was doing it all along. Uh, her brother's name was Hermit, H-U-R-M-I-T. Uh, and you learned that actually Henny's the real power. It's her money. Uh, Ovin's real name is Ovin Kegbottom. He took uh, Henny's last name because, you know, it's cooler. And uh, her dad was really, really rich and liked him. So he funded this operation. Uh, and Hermit was jealous of that and afraid the money was going to come out of his inheritance. However, had he had patience, he would have seen that the operation was successful as you guys returned to Dark Brew to see it uh, not only crowded with the caravan you escorted from Sandharth, but uh, large groups of merchants from both Inglestone and Jamaka Araka. Uh, you were also... Uh, invited to a feast not in your honor but in the honor of a very special guest and Oven wanted you there to basically help impress him and uh you also heard strange odd noises coming from venzo's doorless fence uh which was laughter and lucky uh had the bright idea of delivering the pear tree you guys got as a gift from cowtown uh giving it to him for his garden. Uh, you were invited in and met the surviving members of the Forgotten Five, an old uh, adventuring party that did heroic deeds across the world uh, until one of their members tragically met their end in the uh, Araka Mountains and the group, thus causing the group to disband. Uh, you met Angor Frostbeard, Gilead Brumal, Kierna Barkide, and of course, Venzo was there as well. Uh, they informed you they would be at dinner uh, after you chatted and drank. Uh, you were politely asked to leave so they could continue their discussions. And that's where we are at. Uh, we can, you guys can do whatever you want to do. We can jump ahead to dinner. We can do, uh, what do you guys want to do? Um, at some point between the Venzo garden party and uh, just chilling for mm -hmm. for dinner. I just want to have a little team team meeting back at our place. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you guys will go back to uh, you guys will go back to your the, the bunkhouse. What's our your headquarters? Headquarters. That's upside down. That's upside down. 
Um, so, I just wanted us to kind of give a run through of what we've discovered so far with Henny. So, she hired us to find out who was... I keep... I've got the plague doctor on my lap and I keep like gesturing and he keeps pushing the desk and wiggling my camera. So I'm, <laughs> so I'm going to move him. Um, so she hired us to find out who was hiring someone to kill Ovin. And then we ended up finding out that we're like 96% sure that it's her brother because he was jealous that the money that Henny's family invested in, the thing, this whole dark brew thing, was just going to disappear. But now that it's proven at least successful for now, do we think the assassination attempts are going to continue out of, you know, spite of being wrong? Or do you think he's going to call them off? Henny's going over there to talk with him, right? She's teleporting. Uh, Henny is going back to, uh, I forget how to pronounce this. Uh, Oberverden. <laughs> Oberverden, thank you. Oberverden. Um, he's going back to Oberverden to see her father and get see what he wants to do, see if he is there. But you, at this point, you know that uh, Henny has, uh, with the use of uh, Venzo's magic, has teleported to Oberverden uh, to seek counsel with her father. Um, Bruce Dark Brew. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what she. So that's gets you all caught up. I'm just. I feel like if someone was petty enough and short-sighted enough to hire assassins on your brother-in-law, you might not just stop because the venture that you still have no stake in is successful rather than a failure. I'm a. I mean, maybe I don't know how the family dynamics work, but I feel like if you're taking a hit out on your brother-in-law, you're. Your parents probably aren't going to give you a stipend for the successful investment that you aren't a part of, right? I agree. I don't think it's over. I just don't think we should consider things handled and clean. Mm -hmm. Is all. Unless one of you has strong feelings that I'm just a uh, curmudgeon-y over, uh, overthinking dwarf, but I don't think so. I'm I think there's curious. a lot of truth to your what you're saying. I, I would agree. I, how far away? Henny had, Henny had to teleport, but if we didn't have that ability, how far oh, would that be? Weeks and weeks. Yeah, months. Okay. Probably a couple months. Yeah, if you're walking three yeah. or four months, if you take a ship, it's probably... Because the ship can just cross right across the bay, whereas if you're walking, you have to go all the way around a massive inland sea. Um, so if you hire a ship, a month or two maybe. Yeah. So I, and if I hope Henny has a way to contact her brother, <laughs> tell him to not the, cut the shit, honestly. Yeah. And, even and we don't she, know where her brother is. Right? I don't think she knows no where idea. he is. Hmm. She might have a hunch. I, I'm just worried that mm -hmm. all that's going to happen when she goes and talks to her dad is that she's had a chat with her dad and everything continues as it has been, but now we know who a suspect is. So if you see Do we know what he looks like in case we run into him or see him somewhere he shouldn't be? I don't. He probably wouldn't do anything himself, but still. Uh, he doesn't seem like the type. I, I don't think Henny gave us a description. Um, but if you guys see anything suspicious at dinner tonight, definitely, definitely do something. We don't get paid if our employer is assassinated at dinner. And this would not be the first dinner that someone... Well, I guess it was brunch. This would not be the first meal that someone's tried to put a bolt in his neck more or less successfully. That's all. Thanks for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> we still have to walk your, talk. It's your Theodore talk. It's it's my uh, the educating dwarf talk. <laughs> well done, well done. Give yourself an inspiration guy for that one. The endangered <laughs> dwarf. I don't know. <laughs> Just take it. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
Is there anything anyone else wanted to do before we uh, you know, head to a... I'm going to change into my fancy party outfit that I have. So <clears throat> My black leathers. I'm going to go have a nap. Ooh. Okay. Nap. Uh, Fantasy. Lucky changes. You guys nap. <laughs> Dinner. All right. Uh, this is a nice day off. <laughs> I think I want a nap. Okay. Uh, so we just want to fast forward to you guys heading out to dinner? I think so. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys are going to go to dinner, and you have been told it is actually in uh, Ovin's house, uh, one of his banquet rooms. So you are let in. And uh, before you even get down the hall, uh, there are two uh, dark brew uh, vigilance guys guarding the entryway and uh, two more guarding the inside of it. One of them leads you down the hallway and you see a door and there's two uh, vigilance guys outside the door as well. So you can tell that, you know, he has the same concerns Kelwin did. Uh, before you even get down the hallway, though, you can hear uh, laughter and glasses clinking. And, and most uh, most distinct of all is uh, Angor's laugh uh, echoing down the hallway. Uh, and you walk in and you see not so much a banquet, uh, but just a table with nothing but jugs, drinks, various alcohol. There is no food to be seen whatsoever. <laughs> it is just a table full of wine um, and uh, whiskeys and ales and meads and, and any kind of drink you can think of, it's, it's there. Uh, and uh, <laughs> Angor and uh, Gilead, uh, they definitely look like they have been, you know, drinking since you guys saw them. They have kept their day drink on. Uh, Venzo looks, you know, happy, but not totally drunk. And uh, Kierna is kind of, you know, hard to read. Is maybe um, Venzo is one of those people that until you're interacting with them, they see to they seem totally sober. But as soon as you're like talking with them, then it's like, oh, you've actually had like three bottles of wine. I see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at uh, one end of the table, you see Ovin. Uh, Ovin is looking pretty glassy eyed and happy and seems like some stress is off of him. Behind him very dutifully is uh, Lyric standing in her full armor. Uh, respectful a couple feet behind but you can see uh she does have like a glass of wine in her hand Oven is not excluding her but you haven't seen her sip take a sip and uh it will probably be the only glass of the night for her uh and there's a couple other guards uh in the room just kind of hanging back on the wall um at the other end of the table from opposite Oven, uh you see a very well-dressed, uh, actually, you know what, before we do that, just for uh, our uh, for our watcher, um, <laughs> if you want to go ahead and uh, hold on a second. I, I like to, to picture it. this getting somewhat popular, and there still ends up being a running joke. We refer to our singu singular viewer. Singular viewer, <laughs> yes. Uh, Everyone comment, it's me, down below. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I am going to focus on a tab. If you want to pin this, Ovin, or oh, Kelwin, I mean. Uh, uh, th it, you presenting puts it center Oh, screen. puts it up. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, so uh, thanks to Hero Forge, I kind of whipped up some of what... Uh, <laughs> some of what uh, the, the Forgotten Five looks like. So oh. there's Venzo and Frostbeard <laughs> and Gilead and Kierna. Nice. So, cool. all right. So thank you for that, Kelvin. All right. So <laughs> thank, you, uh, thank, you. thank you. Yeah, thank you, Hero Forge. That makes, <laughs> thank you, Hero Forge, for making a really easy, quick way to come up with a quick visual on characters. Um, Not sponsored. So, <laughs> uh, at the other end of the table is a very well-dressed uh, 
very wealthy looking sun elf. Um, he is also looking very happy, has a couple of drinks in his hand, uh, but he also looks familiar to Lucky, Valmaya, and Ula. Lucky and Valmaya, you recognize him as Templeton Spang, the merchant whose guards attacked you on while you were in the caravan on the way to Inglestone. Um, and uh, this was not recorded. This was a pre-game uh, thing we did with I did with uh, groups of two just to get used to playing. Um, so you recognize him as a very very wealthy. Uh, Merchant from Jamaraka up in the uh, northwest, on the other side, on the eastern side of the Araka Mountains. And uh, Ula, you recognize him, Templeton, as a longtime friend of your dad's. Uh, but you have not seen him in several years, but uh, you know him to be a good friend and a business partner and colleague and someone who has. You know, it's at times uh, by the estate fairly often, uh, but as you kind of got further into your studies uh, and your hobby, not hobby, or your avocation, I should say, you, uh, you saw him less and less because you were at the estate less and less. But What's yes, Kelvin. Avocation. A vocation. Um, it's more. It's like a job, but it's. Like my great. It's a fancy word for hobby, I guess. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, it's like a hobby, but more than a hobby. <laughs> like Dungeons mm. and Dragons. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yes, Lucky. Can you refresh my memory on the interaction that we had while we were out on the road? I remember being attacked. Did he tell his guys to stand down? Yeah, he, he ended he up told, being an okay guy, yeah, and he exactly. was just his guys that were the dicks. I mean, you Valmaya. guys, you guys were you and Valmaya were had met for the first time. Uh, it was when the caravan was camped, and these guys uh, were on break from their job as his bodyguards. And we're giving you guys a hard time just because you, you know, looked different than everybody else. And he showed up, and uh, before uh, before fisticuffs could ensue, he chastised his uh, guards suitably and sat down and had a chat with you guys. So yes, he came across as, you know, wealthy, arrogant, but you know, decent dude. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Oven kind of stands up, sees you, stands up, is very happy, raises his drink. Oh, the Dark Broom Monster Vanguard, heroes of Sandhearth, come in, come in. <laughs> and, Me? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Temple Fang <laughs> turns around and sees you and, and, uh, <laughs> looks, catches, makes eyes with Valmaya and Lucky's. Oh, good to see you again. And then sees Ula and goes, Ula, I had heard you would be here. It is so good to see you again. How have you been? Templeton, it's an honor to see you again. It's been a long time. I'm great. I'm in part of an adventure league now. The, as you've heard, I'm sure it's been going real swell. Learning yes, a lot. Yes, yes. Your Learned dad told me all yeah. about it. I was looking forward to seeing you here. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a real trip, but uh, let me tell you, we've well, done some amazing thing. Speaking of trips, I have to thank all of you. Uh, our, I was put in charge of, or asked by uh, your dad to lead the first delegation of merchants and uh, craftspeople to come from Jamara from Sha'araka. Uh, he asked me to oversee everything and make sure everything went smoothly, and the trip here couldn't have been smoother. A nice walk up the riverbank and a clear path right through the mine. Well done. Excellent. Well done indeed. So, so uh, yeah, you guys um, sit down. Uh, you are, glasses are placed in front of you. Uh, you are asked, there are attendants who are waiting on you, pouring, and some come by and ask you what kind of drink you would like. Um, and they fill those drinks and uh, as the evening wears on, you notice that when your glass gets, you know, around halfway empty or whatever, basically your glass is never empty as long as you're sitting at the table, unless you, you know, request it to be. But um, 
Yes. Yeah, so you guys sit and uh, and and Angor uh, looks at you, Kelwin, and what? says, "What? What? What? Angor? What?" <laughs> <laughs> Angor looks at you and says, "Come, come, sit by me. Sit by. Let's have dwarfs have drinks together." And he, he, as you sit down, he pours some of that dwarven whiskey that he had given you before at Venzo's into your glass and Quite generous holds the glass up. Well, why not? Why not be generous? It's no fun drinking alone. Not that I don't do that, but you know, only only when situations are dire, <laughs> but I can't find anyone to drink with. Understood. Um, mm-hmm. I'm happy to help drink your whiskey. I'm always happy to help drink someone else's whiskey. Ah, that's what I like to hear. Uh, rest of you, find a seat. Um, and uh, Winter, please roll perception. Angor's the bear dwarf, right? Yes. Okay. Here we go. We've got an 11. An 11. Okay. So. Uh, <laughs> you notice <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing more unnerving than the DM being like, roll this. Here. And there's just funny with, good. Moving yep. on. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Don't be bad. You're snapping the back. No. Uh... Step in the front. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you guys have any questions for anyone sitting at the table, or should we just go on and see what happens? Or Okay. <laughs> So they start talking about some, you know, adventures and things like this. And Oven Oven pops up, chimes in, and says, uh, says to you guys, it's like, so tell us, tell us about uh, your trip down to Sandharth. I'll let uh, I, I point to Lucky. I'll let the furry one over there. He's usually the talkative one. I tell a bad story, so. Okay, so it was amazing, right? So we left and it was all deserty and we were walking and walking and then we found this oasis. Oh, but first we like got attacked by centaurs and then we fixed that. And then we found the oasis and then there was a bear and he splashed water on us and it was like, oh, and, and then we headed towards the town and then there were the big things coming up, the bullets, and we fought, we killed, we kicked ass and then we got to town. <laughs> that That's actually... Yeah, that's about it, yeah. <laughs> and Templeton kind of uh, smiles over his drink, takes a sip and says, tell me, what did you think of Sandharth? I haven't been there in a long, long time. And uh, If I remember correctly... If you're thinking of going to Sandharth, don't. No. I, I have been a long time ago, and it was, yes, it was, I believe my enjoyment in the city depended greatly upon which way the wind was blowing and how strong it was blowing. Sounds about right. Yeah. yeah that's that's mm. reflective. Hasn't much but there changed. were some nice people, and they made a lot of cool stuff. They gave us a lot of great stuff. Great art. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, what? Oh, God. A tree. A tree. We saw the Rhinoceros? tree. Rhinoceros? Carved yeah. from bones? Mm-hmm. That was pretty Or funny. I should say that uh, uh, Gillid says, yes, we saw the tree. Isn't that right, Venzo? And Venzo just kind of nods and smiles and says, yes, thank you. Uh, Angor just kind of like prods him a little bit, says, oh, talkative as ever, aren't you? And then Kiernis speaks up and looks at you, Lucky, and you say, did you say you were attacked by centaurs? Indeed. God. <laughs> <laughs> she gets a, a, a quizzical look on her face and says, that is, that is odd. Do they not normally attack? Because they were so attacking. <laughs> it's rare. Centaur rare. Centaurs are normally, I mean, they can be territorial, but I do not know them. It's very rare for them to attack. I assume you weren't provoking them? Not more than just walking through the desert, unless they uh, take extra offense at dwarves. 
Hmm. We were just doing our thing. We saw a cloud of dust. They kept getting closer. We Shattered. they started charging. Hmm. That's interesting. That's unlike centaurs. I distinctly Very remember curious. someone trying to uh, parlay with them as well, Ooh. and they were having. Is that Nikoya? Nikoya, right. did you try and talk to them? Yeah, I tried to dissuade them from attacking us further, but it didn't work. Uh, if I remember correctly, or if you remember correctly, uh, it wasn't so much parlaying as I believe Nikoya getting in their head, and I think it was more intimidation. Uh, yeah, it was. It was more intimidation yeah. than than persuasion or parlaying. That's or, fine. Yeah. I'm still gonna tell my version of it. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I'm just I'm just refer I'm just refreshing your guys' memory. We tried so, so. hard to talk with them, and they just yeah. weren't having any of it. <laughs> So we killed them all. Yeah. <laughs> As you do. Are we the baddies? <laughs> column A, column B. Column A, column B. Excellent. Anyway, so the... Uh, I, I did know centaurs were in the area. Um, I didn't expect to... Yeah, meet. they're they're common among territory, ter terrain like this. Um, wide open plains and things like that. But it is strange for them to attack unprovoked. I mean, they will attack and they are fierce warriors, but for them to do that is, I'm glad you survived. Is you must that, be, I mean, so are we. you must be very capable to hand your, handle yourself against four centaurs. Is that really more How did you know there were the four? Bullets? Excuse me, against some centaurs. <laughs> Didn't you say there were four? I forget. <laughs> is that? So. Is that actually more impressive than the bullets? I thought the big burrowing things tunneling out of the ground were. Oh well, you did kind of gloss over those. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. The whole the I whole trip very is, detailed. The whole trip is very very <laughs> impressive. Yeah, thanks. Um, is there any history of, you know, like commerce between uh, the centaurs and Sandharth or any? cities honestly um it's kind of unknown there is commerce between there was commerce between uh all of the there is commerce between all of the cities in the area but it is very it's much more rare with the um, centaurs like oh not the centaurs between yeah. the cities oh you meant the centaurs and the cities i thought you meant between the cities themselves no. uh i would say no one here would have that kind of knowledge. Um, Ovin's new to the area, and uh, Templeton mostly spends his time on the eastern side of the mountains, and not in the Arid Valley itself. Well, maybe um, we could so. broach some sort of trade agreement with the Centaurs. We uh, seem to find our way into a position of dealing with otherwise dismissed species groups living creatures and uh dark brew and maybe lyric can help us too because i'm pretty sure lyric's the one who told us about the centaurs and told us to watch out and maybe she knows something about the centaurs uh lyric looks at you and smiles and she said yeah i mean i could possibly do that i i've never talked to them i agree with um Kierna, that I've never seen them attack unprovoked. I did try to stare clear of them in my wilder days out in the woods. Do they but... speak common? Uh, centaurs speak Sylvan. Oh, that's a language barrier. Uh, I think one of you speaks. I think Winter speaks Sylvan. No, nope. I think three of us speak um... Sylvan. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I think a few of you speak Sylvan, don't you? Well, common, that's... Elvish, Infernal. Okay. Sylvan fall under any of those? No, or no? it's related no. to if no. you wanna. It's related to the elves. But... It's a huge nerd to know that it uses the same script as uh, <laughs> Elvish does, because they're just like Elvish is like new Sylvan kind of, a bit like old English and new English, where they're it's related, like it's like new math. Overlap, but Kelvin, where did you learn all that? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. So the educated uh, dwarf. Uh, <laughs> it was actually the class after bureaucracy 101. It was 
<laughs> oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. Uh, yes. Centaurs speak Elvish and Sylvan. So that's right. So I, I did oh, know three okay. of you could talk to him for some reason. So it was like, yes, they do. So yeah, you could parlay. And Oven, Oven, uh, Oven laughs again. He says, oh, I knew I knew I hired the right people. Um, and he says, uh, yes, yes. I mean, I'm always open for unexpected trade opportunities. So if it's not too dangerous, maybe that will be your new your next mission. But we don't have to decide that now. Did you guys Oven have earned a couple days off. Was Oven hmm? like, was Oven like unexpected trade <laughs> things? Or was... No, he was being sincere. Okay. <laughs> Um, and then, uh, Owen says to, uh, Venzo, I am certainly glad you suggested them to me. Hmm. And Venzo nods. Hmm? Says, well, I knew about them through, I knew about two of them at least through Gilead and Angor. What? What? Why? Oh, you guys didn't. And then Oven's like, "Oh, you didn't know." Benzo, are you keeping secrets? Yeah, you smug dingus. Not me. Not me. Not me. And Angor pipes up and has another drink and says, "Oh well, you might as well find out here. Um, you are not here just as a random. Well, at least not Winter and and Kelwin. I mean." Uh, I know of you, Kelwin, from letters from my son, who described to me a rather boisterous, joyful, happy red, red bearded dwarf. I thought I recognized that last name. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, Flint was my boy. Uh, well, fuck. And I, I knew of you through him, and I know. Uh, what he meant to you. Um, and trust me, I bear you no... Res I hold no responsibility for his death to you. In fact, I know what you gave up oh, to shit. try to save him. He knew what the life was. I appreciate the kind words, but let's leave this conversation here. That's fine. I just wanted you to know that. But when Oven said he was looking for specialized adventurers, I had heard the kind of... I heard what had happened to you afterwards and thought he might be an excellent... This might be a good home for him. You uh, honor me with thinking of me for the role. Well, it's the least I could do. And remember... Don't let your grief run your run your life too long. Otherwise, you wind up sorrow and alone, like Venzo here. And <laughs> Venzo, Venzo just laughs and shakes his head. Oh, you know that's not true. You don't have to be in every brothel in every city to find happiness, Angor. <laughs> oh, I know, but it helps. I mean, yeah, I agree <laughs> with that. <laughs> Uh, and Gaila just kind of chuckles and says, well, since we're telling secrets, uh, Winter, it's good to see you. Yeah. I, I knew your mother. You knew my mom? Yes. <laughs> How? Uh, and Winter, now you... <laughs> Winter, now you notice. Uh, you had been looking at him for a little while and <gasps> finally because something seemed Daddy. off and then you notice that around his neck he has a pendant that matches the blue one around your neck but it is white it is not blue uh and he says yeah i was well angor and i were traveling through towns and on our way to cities. This is, you know, a while ago, about 40, 50, 45 years ago. And 
It's right around you know, and enjoying enjoying the life of retired adventurers and Angor would like to check out every brothel he could at every town we went to. <laughs> Angor races the glass and goes to brothels and takes a big swig. <laughs> Does Nikoya join it? <laughs> sure. Nikoya, <laughs> yeah. the brothels! <laughs> and goes like, ha, ha, I like this one. And yes, I, uh, I preferred to go check out taverns and inns and just, you know, see what conversations <laughs> I could strike up and, you know, maybe what companionship I could find myself for the evening without so much, you know, a little less commerce involved, shall we say. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, I'm going to admit, being an elf in the mostly human cities, it was, I was a novelty. Mm -hmm. uh, I would, <laughs> you know, flirt, and but there was this one woman. It's a brand day. You're a <laughs> And, uh, I I thought I could flirt a good game, but this this woman she had me beat, and boy, I I didn't stand a chance. And but she explained to me, uh, almost sadly, that her father, her brothers, former lovers had all tragically died early. And he takes kind of a sip and gets a little rueful. Well, perhaps this isn't the place for this tale. What? But, yeah, no, you're going to have to keep and, going. And, and, and Templeton's like, go on. <laughs> <laughs> well, she had a daughter already, but wanted a son, but was afraid for her children and was afraid any bringing another child in the world would just die early again. And then she saw me and she said, because I was an elf, she knew any child she had with me would live a long life. And she asked if I could be the father and bed her that night. Or die yes, in infancy. Kelly. Just or die in infancy. Yeah. You know, uh, Fortunately, that's not, you know, as prevalent among us, but you, know, you, you roll the dice. Uh, so I, I agreed, uh, and uh, I did make her promise that if she did have a child, that she would give it that pendant that you were around your neck today. And I got word around a year later that you had been born. And I will confess right now that with Kierna's help, uh, I didn't want to interfere, but uh, I asked Kierna on occasion to scry on that pendant uh, so I could just keep tabs on you and see how you were doing. And when I had learned you left your city to become a mercenary, and I heard that Ovin was opening up this position. I thought he'll be near Venzo, and that's a good thing. And it seemed like it would be a good fit for you. So I don't expect anything. I don't expect you to suddenly feel like you have to be my son. I don't expect anything different. I just thought it was eventually time you knew and here we are amongst friends, I hope, long friend, long lasting friends. Co workers. And I thought this... <laughs> Ah, come on, Kelwin. <laughs> Angor slaps you on the back. <laughs> We're drinking. We're friends. Kelwin actually does smile. <laughs> no. <laughs> um and 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 he just looks at you and says, um and I've been meaning to give you something. And he reaches up and undoes his necklace, slides the pendant off, and gives it to you and says, put this on your necklace, so it, on your chain, so it 
sits next to your pendant. Okay, Winter takes a pendant, he's like shaking, strings it on. Um, uh, I don't know, that's that. I wasn't expecting to uh, meet my father tonight. So forgive me if I'm just a little uh, taken off guard by by this. Um, I have a lot of feelings. I am. I'm. I apologize for springing at you like this, you, uh, but it seemed like a good time. If you drink enough, the feelings tend to go away. <laughs> oh, that's right, says Angor. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I don't really understand. She asks you. Uh, hold on. Angor reaches across the table to where you're sitting and pours some of the extra strong dwarven whiskey into your glass, Winter. <laughs> and Winter just shoots it right back. <laughs> oh, uh, you shoot it right down and realize that was not something, that was not a shots drink. <laughs> that was a right. sipping whiskey. <laughs> Well, so quickly you can feel it burn, there. feel your stomach, and instantly you can like feel, you know, the brain start to fuzz pleasantly. Um, um, <laughs> but anyway, what were you saying? Oh yes. Yeah, I, I don't really get what the she asked you to just get her. She did. But that's kind of weird. Yeah. Not to ruin a moment. Sorry. Yeah. Right? That's kind of weird. She, right? was a, she was a unique woman. I was yeah, sad when she passed away. Great. Um, she knew what she wanted. Apparently. None of the none of the men in her town seemed worthy to her. Uh, well, yeah, if you see Not, I mean, I do, I do take that as a point of pride that she took <laughs> me. <laughs> what? Oh, no, well, nothing winter. Huh? Okay. No, could this continue? Um, so yeah, so that's that's the tale. And I'm going to be honest with you. She was gorgeous. I couldn't say no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> TMI, dad. <laughs> yeah, she was beautiful. Um, I I just think I need process but it's it's confusing to meet you <laughs> <laughs> and he just he just is his, his air of seriousness just breaks and he he throws his head back and laughs and, and says it's confusing to meet you too <laughs> here's that, here's that. Here's you guys cheers hey he holds, he holds the drink out to, to angor who cheers. Fills it with his dwarven whiskey, <laughs> uh, and you go. And, and and those of you paying attention have noticed that uh, lyric has a lyric has been watching the conversation very intently, eyes on winter the whole time, and has not been drinking. <laughs> so. Something's wrong with her. Kelly, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> Uh, she all right. <laughs> emotionally <laughs> damaged. Now then, is my time. <laughs> exactly. so, uh, um, is is lyric human? I forget. Lyric, no, lyric is a sun yeah. elf. Is a sun elf. Okay, okay, yes. okay. Um, maybe they're siblings. <laughs> Wait, can I turn to um? Dad, what's your name? What? Gillen? Gillen. No. Yeah. Gillen. <laughs> Strong whiskey, Winter. <laughs> uh, at which point, um, Angor says, well, now that that's done, I have a request to make. It has been years since I had a good old fashioned sparring session. Would you two, and he points to Kelwin and Winter, 
would you too like to meet me for a little training tomorrow morning? Can't you, like, turn into a bear or something? Are you asking us to fight a bear? No, of course not. <laughs> and how did you know I could turn into a bear? I was just guessing. No, you've I got can't a big, turn into... <laughs> you've, you've got a big bear tattoo. That doesn't mean I can turn into a bear. I mean, I can get bear-like when I, when I fight, but I can't turn into a bear. I mean, I can metaphorically. Okay. <laughs> you know, depending on how drunk I am. Sure. Uh. <laughs> uh, so, but it'll be my honor to, to test my metal against. If I'm not gonna get centaur killing, boulette killing fighters such as yourselves. Uh, it would be my. I don't know. Pain to fight the retired. Oh, I'm sure will. Legendary hero. <laughs> I hope you're rusty, otherwise uh, I have legend, no chance. <laughs> the, le the legend part was a long, long time ago. Fine, the dairy hero. <laughs> You'll do fine. Drink up! <laughs> uh, and Venzo looks at you, Lucky, and says, Well, since they'll be playing with their instruments tomorrow, perhaps we should maybe meet for... <laughs> Wait, no, I'm sorry. The way you phrased that was so <laughs> gross. <laughs> and and Benzo, Benzo looks at you, Nikoya, and says, Benzo looks at you, know, warriors and their swords. Ah. Uh, okay. Like I, would like more, trade, really. I would like to trade songs with you tomorrow, if that would be okay. Why not I tonight? would love that. Oh, I'm too drunk to play. <laughs> too drunk to play well. That's fine. We're all I didn't bring. Too I didn't drunk bring my. Well. I didn't bring Same. my my lute with me. And no, no. I would just like to learn some, trade some songs with Lucky. And... We've heard that there's so many songs about you. I would love to hear some of the songs that are about you, especially if you're teaching me the songs about you. That would be amazing. Uh. <laughs> Those songs haven't been played in a long time, but I'll see if I can remember now's any. Because you never bring your lute anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I mostly play for my... Cat. Play for my... <laughs> self now. So. I um, would love that. Uh, and Kiernan looks at... Says, well, Ula, Nikoya, Valmaya... I guess tomorrow we'll be having Girls' Day. I've never had a Girls' Day okay. before. Yeah. Like Manny Petties? What are we doing? <laughs> oh, we Manny could do Petty. that. We'll play it by air. <laughs> Pillage and slaughter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Girls' Day. <laughs> um, yeah. So, you guys consider continue drinking, continue drinking, um uh getting really nice and sloshed once uh, everyone's really sloshed kelwin's just like wait was the special guest that merchant dude over there uh templeton yes i'm the special guest you're oh, here to impress me <laughs> and you're doing a fine a fine you're here to impress me <laughs> a fine what was i talking about <laughs> Go back to Oven. And then Oven's like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, uh, unless you guys want to drunkenly talk about anything else. And then my dad. <laughs> right? She says, Did your mom have... ever mention him with her? <laughs> and then. <laughs> <laughs> Benzo. Was Zeppelin itching? Benzo then looks. So good. <laughs> Benzo then looks. Benzo kind of like melts a little bit. Looks at Kierna and says, "Kierna, I think it's time." And Kierna, who although she has been, you know, not loud and boisterous, has been enjoying her drink and you can see she's a little tipsy and she's was that the nose? Yeah. the cleric was that the cleric 
gnome, yes, the gnome cleric. Um, and and Kier- and Kierna goes, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. She puts her drink down. She crosses her hands and she starts muttering to herself. And she just does this for a while. And you are all looking at, and you kind of cast awkward glances around the table. And Angor says, no, no, wait, give it a couple more minutes. This is going to be great. And after... (laughs) Ten minutes passes. Winter's over there with the room spinning, trying not to throw up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. and as, as ten minutes passes, as you guys kind of like, you have stopped drinking, so now like you're just watching and you can feel your empty stomachs just, just being like, <laughs> and and some of the room and, and and just like you guys now the drink is is hitting you, and suddenly after ten minutes the table glows and suddenly is filled with bread, cheese, meat, Big Macs. (laughs) Taco Bell. (laughs) Greasy pizza. (laughs) Uh, And Karen looks up and says, "Uh, eat this, pace yourself, Uh, eat for an hour. And in the morning, you'll feel fine. So you guys just kind of continue to chat, eat, uh, still drink. But um, as as the meal progresses uh, between drinking, chatting, and eating, after an hour, uh, you guys all suddenly feel better. It's like you weren't drinking at all. <laughs> yes, Winter. Oh, no. This I'm just... Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. So suddenly, <laughs> clarity. Clear. Now, you can continue drinking if you want, <laughs> but it is late in the evening, and you guys uh, have had a... Yes, Nikoya? Uh, who's in the room with us right now, just out of curiosity? Who's in the room with you right now? You have, yeah. aside from a couple of attendants, a couple of guards uh, hanging mm. back from the wall, um, and Lyric... You have Oven, Templeton, U6, and Venzo, Kierna, Angor, and Gilad. Uh, <laughs> Plague Doctor is not there. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, if, <laughs> if fighters could have familiars, I'd do it. <laughs> um, so that who's, is who was in the room. Okay. You gonna catch okay. shatter? <laughs> <laughs> so many targets. Kierna dispels it. <laughs> Counter counterspell. I'm giving all of your foes now counterspell. Cohen's <laughs> uh, drinking a lot, but trying to act like he's not. If that makes sense. <laughs> Okay. Well, you're you're starting from scratch because you are no longer drunk, um, but yeah. Uh, so, and the the drink is taking a little slower to hit effect because your constitution has been buffed. And all right, um, cool. for those th- those who don't know, basically, you just had Heroes Feast. Um, okay. Can look it up later. <laughs> I will. Uh, so, uh, so yeah. Um, with that. Uh, the uh, the Forgotten Five, or the remaining members of the Forgotten Five, excuse themselves. Uh, Angor tells Kelwin and Winter he will meet them at the amphitheater in the morning, uh, just after breakfast. And uh, Lucky, you are welcome to go to Venzo's at that time. And Kierna will seek the rest of you out at your headquarters. Just after breakfast go meet for you Lucky there. is like 1 p.m. What? Just after breakfast for Lucky is like 1 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> well, while he says, while well, you guys are at the, while well, you guys are meeting with Angor, you guys will meet with. Uh, yeah. Oh, and uh, Winter, now that the fog has cleared, and it has been over 10 minutes of you, you know, just eating, drinking, and silently. 
Uh, you have a strange feeling of clarity come over you. So and do I. You can't quite explain it. Uh, but I would like to give you to give yourself a plus one to your intelligence, please. Okay. And <laughs> we will speak later about the pendant of Vitae Magnus that you now Ooh. wear across your across your I'm at zero intelligence now. <laughs> yes, you are at zero intelligence. You are at ten intelligence now, not zero. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we know what you meant. We know set. what you meant. <laughs> so, Winter yeah, puts um, that's on actually going to be uh, has a brain aneurysm and dies. <laughs> Zero <laughs> intelligence. Uh, it's actually a. It's a. I'm still figuring out homebrew items in um, D and D Beyond, but I will send you the link to that item that you can equip. Oh heck yeah. Um, okay. Actually, you might be able to find it. Uh, it might already be in there since I've shared the campaign with you, but we can figure that out later. So, uh, Wait, do it manually or no? Uh, no, you'll. Uh, it won't come into play. It probably won't come into play the next, you know, in a little while. But yeah, it should be automatic once you equip the item. So, we'll figure gotcha. that out. Okay. Done. Um, okay. Yep. So. Uh, so yeah. Uh, they excuse themselves. Uh, Templeton says he's going to retire to his room. And Oven, thanks you for coming. And you guys just sit a little bit longer with Oven and says, and then things are quiet now and everyone is left and this is you guys and Oven. And Oven says, uh, well, I think that went really well. This and, was um, the weirdest feast I have ever been to. It was, it was. But I, I, think, uh, I think Templeton was duly entertained and impressed. And so I think it went well. What? Oh, why? Yeah. If you don't mind me asking, were we trying to impress him? Um, because he is a very good friend of uh, John Bovis, who's, you know, we want to be friends with us. And, and he brought a lot of people and money uh, to Dark Brew. And also, uh, if it goes well, he is as influential as he is in... Shah Araka, being good friends with uh, Ula's father, uh, he is even more influential of his home city of Jam Araka uh, to the north. So, excellent, uh, excellent person to uh, be friends with. So, and you know, I like him. He's a nice guy. So, he seems great. Um, so. Yes, so, well, uh, it's been a long day. Oh, um, I'm not sure what is going to happen with my brother-in-law. Um, I'll keep you posted when Henry gets back and let you know. Um, but I think your next mission, um, not right away. I want you guys to take a day off or two. You've earned it. Definitely, um, but I think I will be sending you out to meet the centaurs, uh, and I'm worried about that. Uh, do I have to look on Discord and see what you guys are talking about? <laughs> if you're going to talk behind my back, at least do it on chat. On the... <laughs> Not always about you. It's God, <laughs> killing the mood, man. It's just puppers. It's a cute puppy from Valmaya. I've shown our viewer. <laughs> oh, we God, this eat. cute puppies should definitely be on the video. Who doesn't like cute puppies? And... <laughs> Jeez. Anyway, uh, he is worried about the centaurs attacking you now that Kierna seemed concerned about it. Um, and he doesn't want any... He doesn't like the idea of anything unexpected happening near Dark Brew's rest. Unexpected things make people nervous, and he doesn't want the people coming here to be nervous. Maybe it will be nervous. Just... People don't spend their money well, and don't do travel. Just unlike canned goods. Yes, <laughs> they do it. Yes, they do. <laughs> but they do it on extra guards at home, yeah. and I would not like them to do that. So. 
Maybe this will be. Uh, just that will like... probably be your next mission, so mm. um, just bear that in mind. But like I said, a couple days off at least. Cobalt's round two. What does that mean? Centaur Boogaloo. Yeah. <laughs> Are we going back to the desert? Uh... Back to Sandhar? Uh, I think to go make nice with the centaurs if, what, that are left. So yeah, probably not all, all the way. Their friends and family. Probably mm -hmm. not all the way to uh, Santarth, but definitely you know southwest. Or yeah, southwest. Neat. All okay. right. So uh, Oven bids you good night. Thanks you again for a job well done and a. Thanks for a really a great hat. party, Ovin. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I want to pass out. Had their share of drink. <laughs> hey, Milo needs hero's feet. Yeah, he does. <laughs> hey, Tork. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> He's just so cute. Right He's adorable. So cute. See, more puppies. Uh, okay. So dinner is over. What would you like to do now? How late uh, is it? Yeah. Uh, it was a long, long dinner. So it is, I mean, you could go to a tavern if you wanted to, but it is, you know, it's well after midnight. I'm just going to go back to the, the place. Yeah. Still a little <laughs> drunk because I was working on getting drunk round two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to which, go practice some of my, my songs. Yeah. All right. Can um, we out of game take a quick break while we retire? I was just going to suggest. Wait. I was just going to suggest. A, yes. What? I wasn't oh, done what, for Nicole? the night. I was just hey. going. I feel like. Oh. Can we hold off on the break till like we go to tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Nagoya, I, you said you said an expected um. What were you? <laughs> and, um, how far away from that prison are we? That we we saw before that had like AO4 in it and everything. Uh, that is part of the um, constabulary uh, and that I believe was right here. In the oh, it's all the way dark... over there? It's all the Well, you guys are right here. It's like across you guys the are in... big courtyard. Yeah, that's the amphitheater right there. That's Ovin's house right there. And this is where the jail is in the uh, constabulary headquarters. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, it's, uh, not, you know, it's not a big, it's an outpost. It's like a 10 minute walk. Okay. I, I think yeah. if they're all going to go back to bed, I'm going to be like, I'm, you know, I'm pretty full from dinner. I want to walk off some of these calories. Okay. Real quick. Okay. I'm just going to do a few laps around this courtyard okay good night guys <laughs> all right good night and then i'm gonna walk uh, Ellen, are you gonna do something uh i was going to whenever we get back uh wait like an awkward amount of time and then go knock on winter's door okay <laughs> uh we'll get to that in a second nikoya were you um, doing any were you out with a purpose or were you just wandering yeah no off? i want to walk towards the jail Okay. <laughs> Real quick. Okay. Um, <laughs> you are at the jail. Am I? It's pretty dark out, so only, I'm assuming nobody can see me. Only good things happen from post party after midnight going to the right. jail alone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Obviously, um, no one here watches Joe Kenda. Okay. <laughs> no. Nice. Oh. Uh, Great show called Homicide Hunter, Hunter, but he's basically like, nothing good happens after the bar closes. To which I disagree, but anyway. <laughs> Mr. Dungeon is very fond of murder. I uh, am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As you guys will find out. What? No, wait. Ah. Nikoya. All right, Nikoya, you are at the uh, jail. Uh, I'm going to cast Invisible on myself while I'm outside, and I'm going to walk on in. Uh, okay, uh, bear in mind... This is still a pretty, even though it's midnight, it is still a pretty busy courtyard. I mean, there's people milling oh. about. A lot of the, you know, these are the big hotels that the rich people can stay in. But like the merchants and the regular merchants and their servants, like they've got tents set up. 
Um, you know, there's some inns out here, uh, and there are guards stationed outside of the constabulary. So, um, can I dart in a little corner or something? You can find you. You find. Uh, you know what? Go ahead and roll a stealth roll, please, for me. Oh gosh. Uh, 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 what's my stealth? Uh, a twelve. <laughs> You rolled a 12. Okay. Um, so you, which is not too bad. I mean, it's laid out. It's dark out. Uh, you kind of duck behind a tent, go invisible. A couple, like there's one guy who sees, like just kind of out of the corner of the eye, sees you and then doesn't see you again and just kind of shakes his head and goes back to what he was doing. So you are now invisible. Okay. I'm going to go inside the jail. Okay. Uh, Okay, uh, the, you walk up the steps, roll stealth again, please. Oh no. <laughs> Is it with advantage because he's, in, she's invisible? Sure. Oh. Advantage. Actually, okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't quite know how invisibility. I'm going to uh, say yes, because it makes sense. 23. Excellent. Huh. Uh, you walk up the steps very silently. You wait, and because you rolled a 23... Uh, mm -hmm. all right. I'm going to make you roll <laughs> a dex now, oh, no. either dex or sleight of hand, whichever is higher. I guess it would be playoff roll sleight of hand. Okay. <laughs> That's an 18, 18. Okay. Damn. Uh, you tiptoe very quietly up the steps. The guards on either side of the door don't see you. You wait. You wait, you wait, and the second you hear a loud noise that attracts the guard's attention, you open the door just enough for you to slip inside and then close it just enough. It doesn't latch or close all the way, but just enough to look closed if no one's paying attention. So yes, you are successfully inside the jail. Uh, it is lit with torchlight. There is no one immediately in your vicinity. However, you can see uh, down the hall a uh, guard sitting uh, in a chair. Uh, he is reading, but he is not asleep. But he is not paying attention to you. What do you do um, now? You see I... a hallway and several doors. Can I go towards the direction of the cells where the people were? You have been in here before. Yeah. Uh, to question. So yeah, you can go down into the cells. Um, I'm gonna say it is night. It is late. Uh, you have you're invisible. Uh, you encounter no one except for a uh, sentry outside the cells um, who is uh, there. He's not asleep, but he's you know just standing at attention, being dutiful. But you could like lip past him invisible okay um do i get to the cells then yes you're in the cells you're in right. row, yeah there's rolls of cells row of cells on two sides of you uh in two of the cells are a couple of drunk people just sleeping it off um and another cell is uh, all the other cells are empty but the cell furthest to the back uh af4 is still in the cell he's still there yes okay uh, what about those three dudes that we brought back? Are they there? They are not. Okay. Uh, I assume AO4 is asleep. AO4 is asleep. Okay. Um, and there's a guard in the area with us? Uh, down the hall. I would say he's probably about 30 feet away. Not in eyesight. He's kind of like around the corner. Okay. Um... Hmm. Okay, I'm going to sneak back out now, but I know AO4 is there. <laughs> uh, roll a stealth with advantage, please. Okay. Oop, that one fell. Uh, that's a 17. Okay. Uh, roll sleight of hand, please. God damn it. Uh, seven. Seven. You make it all the way back up to the door. And when you go to open the door, it creaks. And the two guards outside go, who's there? Who's there? And then they notice the door is opening. And they're like, "What? how the hell did that open? 
And one of them grabs the door and closes it. You're still inside. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, roll another sleight of hand, please. Okay. That's a 12. That's a 12. Okay, you go to open it. It opens up. It just one of the guards happens to notice. Just look at wow, the doors and the guard. One of the guards steps in, steps through, and pushes the door open and kind of goes right past you to look around to see if anyone's there. Uh, and you slip past, and while he's okay. opened the door, and you slip past into the night, and, and yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll go back down. Uh, all right. So as you are on, as you are checking in on AO4, uh, Kelwin has knocked uh, on Winter's door after they have, after he has waited a suitably uncomfortably long period of time. Uh, after yeah, getting like home. like no. everyone goes to bed and like 20 minutes later, just before, <laughs> just long enough that people might be sleeping. I don't know. Get yep. up and go over there. Understood. Knock, knock, knock. I'm going to ignore it at first. <laughs> <laughs> Legit. I just knock louder. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to open your door. You said yeah. <laughs> okay. You come in. Okay. I'm coming in. <laughs> okay. Open the door. Come in. Come. Shut the door. <laughs> so uh, roll sleight of hand. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you think of dinner? Uh, I thought it was really weird. I mean, I was mostly, you know, confused about the whole dad thing. Yeah, that was fucking weird. Like, yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. That just felt really strange. To why then? Why was what? I don't know. Yeah, I have a lot of questions. Yeah, I don't. Really not sure. I don't blame you. Uh. Yeah. I. Uh, what did you think about dinner? Uh. not what I expected. What were you expecting? Um, honestly, I expected something more like Sandhearth. I didn't expect the dad of a friend of mine from back home to uh, be there or mm -hmm. to say nice things, honestly. To have recruited you? Yeah. I just, I don't know, maybe I'm overly prickly but it uh, he did a nice thing for me but why not just you know say it instead of just hiding behind letters and requests and mm -hmm. all that I, I just like people to be upfront about things so it doesn't sit right when like your dad he's cried on you for how old are you 50 45 for 45 years, he scried on you and didn't think to say hi, write a letter. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't I don't know if I should... I wasn't sure how he would feel, but I'm not giddy. Yeah, I knew I knew that meant a lot to you based on our... Uh, when we first met, you wouldn't shut the fuck up about meeting your dad. It's true. Yeah, well, like, and then it's here, and he's just this guy my mom asked to impregnate her yeah it wasn't any cool glamorous story where he's like a i don't know romance anything nothing it's i mean just any story you with the long lifespan any story you put in your head was never really gonna live up to the truth probably right or other way around i i drank a lot even after that feast yeah I, you, you okay man i'm good sir it's fine. Um, yeah, just don't feel weird about feeling weird. Why do you think they recruited us? Like, I know he said he thought you would have a good home here, but. 
I I always thought it's because my you know I was in the I was in the army and uh, this makes a bit more sense because I um I wasn't really I didn't leave on good terms we'll say uh, mm -hmm. so I was a little confused as to why Oven would pick me for this sort of thing. But mm -hmm. I guess it makes sense if there is someone else. And I, I don't know how much Angor uh, knows about what happened with his son, well, with Flint. Um, but it wasn't... He seemed ready to forgive and forget, from what I could tell. I know, and I, I'm not ready. I still feel guilty about... What happened? Uh, he's dead. Flint's dead. And yeah, I, I gathered that much at least. Yeah, and I um, tried to stop it, but obviously I couldn't. Um, I'm just I, more power to Angor if he's ready to be over it, but I'm not ready to be over it, if that makes sense. I'm honestly a little worried he's just going to kill me tomorrow. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, we are gonna fight. Him. Yeah, and it didn't really sound like there was a, a no thanks option. Yeah, he he seemed fine, you know. Yeah, I, I know. And if he tries anything, I got your back. I don't. I know he seems fine, but I I just don't trust people I mean, who fine seem you fine. Could. Yeah. So what are you, what are you saying? Are you gonna try and get out of it, or just? I'm saying that I'm sick to my stomach, and I'm probably not gonna sleep tonight, and I, oh. it's probably over nothing. But I don't know. I felt like you could kind of relate. You're the only other person who had a weird dinner beyond meeting people, or weird in a yeah. similar way. So. Yeah, I, I guess so. Um. That's all gonna i have to piss really bad so i'm gonna go uh, do it outside if you if you can yeah uh good good night winter yeah good night sir you can just call Colin. me kelwin good night Colin. yes sir <laughs> wow uh nice. winter give yourself an inspiration dive please okay uh excellent role playing both of you uh, all right, uh, we will take a break there unless anybody else had anything they wanted to do. So, all right, we'll take a break there. And when we come back in 10 minutes, uh, it will be the morning. Ooh. All right. You're not about to die mostly. <laughs> Hopefully. Mostly. I did start it. Okay. Oh, well, hey, <laughs> we're back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys sleep it off. Um, let me just get the Kelwin, and that's winter there. Okay, good, good, good. Um, all right, you guys <clears throat> sleep it off. Uh, go to your respective appointments, and we will start off at okay. the <laughs> arena. So right here is like the little amphitheater. And I think Nikoya oh, cool. had something while we were doing. Oh, this. I'm sorry, Nikoya. What I was. It's we've already moved on. It's fine. No, we haven't. No, say, we haven't. Say your thing. Yeah. No, no, it's fine. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, we have. Um... All right. So. You guys arrive at the arena, the amphitheater, and you see Angor in the middle of it, and he's just kind of like stretching and moving over, like, you know, doing some arm circles and, you know, basically old man exercises. <laughs> uh, and you also notice that there are quite a lot of people in the stands in on the seats of the amphitheater uh somehow possibly the guards uh the attendants at the dinner 
uh, somehow word spread that the two warriors of the monster vanguard were going to be taking on a famous uh, warrior in his own right. And just word spread out and people have come to, to see what transpires. Uh, and uh, you recognize Templeton is there. Uh, Lyric is there next to Ovin. Um and Gilead is also in in the uh, the crowd watching. And you guys approach, and Angor says, Welcome, welcome, come in. Oh, this is going to be fun. And he has a big two-handed club just kind of resting on his shoulder. Um, I'm going to just lean over and whisper to Kellen and be like, I don't think he would do a public execution. Yeah, but if he does, you're in charge. All right. <laughs> so uh he goes so this is gonna be fun let's go ahead and make things interesting uh you know the gods gave us healing potions for a reason so let's go full out and not hold back shall we those Ooh. are expensive oh i've got plenty <laughs> don't worry about it I don't. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I, 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 I was an adventurer for, for many, many years and made a lot of money. <laughs> well, uh, maybe you I'm could not tell, worried about it. Maybe you could tell Ovin to uh, or pay a bit. <laughs> oh, you'll get, you won't get. No, no, no. You won't get. You won't get money from an employer. You'll get money from treasure. That's fair. Treasure, that's that's where the adventuring money is. So, so uh, do, do we just start? Do we, like, stretch? You know what? Yeah, why don't we do that? I'll tell you what. I will give you guys do the you, first swing. Do we run, like, a half swing. mile to warm up? Something? <laughs> if you need to get warmed up, that's fine with me. I just... Kellen just starts stretching a little bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, where would you guys like to be in position Sand to... <laughs> where would you guys like to be in relation to Angor? Um, oh my gosh. Uh, I mean, ideally flanking him, but that seems cheap to start that way. So I, I'd like to be... As far away from him as possible. <laughs> All right. Well, you can do the ten foot thing. I'd like to be further than that. Okay. I'd like to be further than that. All right. Well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Literally as far away in the ring as I can be. I mean, Winter and I. All right. I can we'll still say be... you and Winter entered there. Yeah. Uh. Okay. And he uh, he says that he's going to give you guys, come on, you guys got first shot. But uh, Kelwin and Winter, roll for initiative to see which one of you goes first. Quick question. Do I have to specify non-lethal or is that just a given? Uh, for, that's a given. For this exercise? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'll just oh, wow. Wow. Oh, wow. You, I won. Kelwin rolled an eight and one. <laughs> All right, Kelwin, you go first. Uh, I'm going to hold my action. Going to hold your action. <laughs> Until he gets within 10 feet He'll of look me. Over and be like, Here's the dude. Come on. Um, I just plant myself on, in like... Come on, Kelwin. Plant That's myself fun. in like dwarven like battle stance with the halberd like braced on the ground. and. Come on, just... Milo's watching you. Are you just going to stand there? I am. <laughs> you can do it. I'd like to not get squashed. What was that? Oh, was that Milo? Nice. Uh, Winter, what's your move? I'm going to run at him. All right. <laughs> uh, you run at him. And what do you do? I am going to... I assume you have both. You have your hatchet and your dagger? Mm -hmm. your, your axe and dagger? Okay. We'll start with the axe. Okay. I'll just make a good swing. Um, 22 to hit. Nice. That definitely hits. And then uh, for damage, that's going to be a nine. Okay. And then I'm going to hit him with my dagger. All right. Go for it. Uh, 15. Okay. 
And well, did that hit? Yes, it did. Okay. Oh wait, fifteen? No, it did not. Okay. Missed. Okay. Okay. Uh, he is going to look at you, uh, Kelvin, and go, "Oh, I'm very disappointed. At least Winter has some balls." And he is going to take his club. Ooh. And uh, oh, actually, first uh, he is going to he lifts his club. He like just looks at his wounds, and he gets really, really angry, and he is about to rage. So he is now really? raging, <laughs> and he is going to swing his great club at you uh, with an eight plus twelve. Uh, so I assume twenty hits. Yeah. Okay. Real bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> can I parry? Uh, can you parry? I guess you can parry. I'm gonna parry. What does Harry do again? I don't have you up. Um, I can use my reaction. Mm -hmm. I spend one superiority die to reduce damage by the number I roll plus two. Okay, excellent. Uh, well, he is going to roll a 1d8 plus seven. Uh, five plus seven is 12. Okay, and I'm going to roll my d8. <laughs> So that's going to be minus six, whatever that was. What did you okay, say? Okay, so he got 12, so you take six. Okay. All right, and he's going to do his second attack. Uh, and he is going to hit you with a 19. Okay, uh, yeah, that And hits. that is going to do, whoops, 1d8 plus seven is, oh, that is going to do uh what six plus thirteen? Thirteen points of damage. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, it ah. is your turn. Uh, it is your turn, Kelwin. Uh, can I make a nice snide remark of him saying that winter his spirit, and I can say like, yeah, but I have training, and <laughs> just kind of gesture at winter who got just absolutely brutalized. <laughs> Um, and he just he just shrugs and says, "All right, if you want to watch me beat the shit out of your friend." <laughs> um, then can nice. I move my full twenty five feet of movement so I'm diagonal across from Winter, flanking? Okay. Yep, right there. Um, and now I'm going to try and hit him with my glaive. I think I have advantage because the flanking. Because you are flanking. Yep, you can hit him with the glaive. All right. So let's try and do that. Uh, I'm going to roll again to see if I crit, but that was a 23. Okay, I'll take the 23. Uh, and then I'm going to trip attack. Okay. So I can expend... Does a, does a 23 hit? A 23, yeah, 23 okay. hits. Okay, I'm going to not what only... What does the trip attack do? Um, He's got to roll see. strength, right? Yeah, he must, has to make a strength saving throw versus DC 14. Okay. That was nine plus whatever this is, plus two. So 11 points of damage, and he has to save against being. Okay. Being uh, he has a plus 11 to strength, plus three because he's raging. So he gets a plus 14 to strength. What's the AC he's got to match? Uh, he's got to beat a 14. Okay. So <laughs> guess what? I think he beat he, it. <laughs> yeah, I think he makes it. Okay. He is not tripped. <laughs> I see. Um... Great. <laughs> uh, that's 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 the turn. Okay. He is going to turn around, smile at you, and take another swing. Take a swing with his uh, great club. Uh, that is uh, nine plus twelve is oh nope sorry six two eighteen plus three is nineteen so nine twenty one. Yes, that that hits. Okay. Uh, so he hits you for six plus seven, 13 points of damage. Minus three because heavy armor minus, master. <laughs> minus three because heavy armor. Thank you. And he's going to take another swing. And that is going to be 16 plus three, 19. I'm going to, I get hit. I get hit. 
You get hit. Yeah, All I right. can't. I can't do anything. Okay. Uh, seven plus seven is fourteen. Minus three is eleven. Eleven. Okay, Winter, your turn. Okay. Um, I am going to. Oh, sorry. Um, swing at him with my dagger. Okay. I rolled an eight. With advantage, because we're flanking him. That's right. Roll again. Okay. Uh, 12? Uh, 12 does not hit. Yeah. Okay. So, in that case, I'm just going to use my bonus action to do second wind. Okay. Which is 1d10 plus 4 HP. Okay. Wow, that sucks. Okay, uh, that's it, total. <laughs> that does. <Yeah. laughs> that does suck. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> he is going to uh, keep his eye since you didn't really hit him. He just kind of like looked back at you and smiled and nodded and then goes, takes his club back and goes to take another big swing at Kelwin. Wait again? Because he just hit me. What? <laughs> well, you know. Because <laughs> didn't he just go out of... <laughs> what? Right, because I was at the top of the round, and then he just smacked me. It was you, Winter. I think I think you did him in between. Oh, I did, I did. Okay, so it's your turn again. Okay, I just didn't want to get smacked more than I had. Sorry to. about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to glaive him. Okay, glaive him. Uh, with advantage still, because he didn't mm -hmm. move. Ooh, wow, eleven total. Uh, you did not hit. Okay, I'm going to second wind. Mm -hmm. So it's 10 plus 3. There's no, 10 plus 4. Okay, well, never mind. I got even worse than, <laughs> <laughs> than uh, Winter did. So I got 5 hit points back. Um, and... I'm going to action surge mm -hmm. and do something really lame and just use it to uh, uh, f dodge. Okay. That's it. Okay. Um, so winter than you. Okay. So he is going to... Uh... He is going to, he did not take damage on that round, so he is going to spend another rage as a bonus action. Oop. And then he's going to take another swing at you, Kelwin, because Winter's uh, attacks didn't do much. Um, and he rolled an 18 plus 7. I assume that hits. But he has disadvantage because I dodged. You dodged, that is correct. Uh, 14 plus 7. That still hits. <laughs> yep. Uh, <laughs> six plus seven is thirteen. Oh, I haven't been adding plus three. It was because of his club. Oh, that's okay. Oh, did shoot. Oh. Shoot. We'll do it next time. Got uh, sixteen. <laughs> sixteen, uh, and then minus he, three from heavy armor. Minus master. three for your. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, so now he is going to do with his second attack a reckless attack. Uh, and that means he gets advantage on you, so that means the disadvantage will cancel out. Yeah. So. Maybe uh, he'll miss. Uh, oh, he might have missed. Uh, yeah, I think he missed. What, what do he get? does. So he does a reckless attack, and he swings, well, recklessly. Uh, and he got a 18. Does 18 hit? That's my armor class. That hits. <laughs> So he just, just manages, even with the reckless attack, just manages to get you. Uh, and that is 6 plus 7 again is 13. Plus 3 is 16. Back to 13 because of your armor. Uh, that's, so, I am at 0 hit points. You're at 0. Okay. Yeah. So you take that and you go down to 0. And he uh, he holds up his hand at Winter and says, stop, 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 stop. And he gets down on his knee and he takes out a... A uh, large red bottle of uh, uh, red liquid, and he 
pours it down your throat. This is just and Bloody blood. Mary! <laughs> <laughs> and you are healed for... Where is that? Where is that? Where is that? Uh, you are healed for... Uh, 8d4 plus 8. I guess I'll roll 8d4. Yep. 2, 3, 4. Oh my yeah. god, so many dice just launched across my screen. <laughs> uh, he basically just burned a, a superior healing potion just for this little bit of fun. Uh, I'm now at 25. Okay. So, you get up. Uh, shake it off sigh and as you get into your stance Gilad stands up and says wait wait Angor this come on and he kind of walks into the arena and he walks up to you and he says may I see your glaive yeah but don't hurt it okay <clears throat> He turns around, smiles at Angor, and says, sorry about this. And before Angor can even move, Gilad hits him with the butt end of the glaive four times right on his forehead. <laughs> like, in a snap. And Angor just kind of, like, shuffles back. And he looks at you and he says... You don't have to swing hard to hurt somebody. And then he takes you and Winter aside and says, look, shorten your follow through, concentrate on connecting. Don't go on such a big swing to begin with and you'll get faster. And he kind of makes you guys practice a little bit to get your as many swings as you can. Uh, and you guys attempt this and you guys spar with Angor a little bit more. And as the day progresses, the morning progresses, uh, you find yourselves actually able to get in that extra attack. You guys have extra attack. Welcome to level five. Yay. So you, oh. get, <laughs> you guys get extra attack. Just as not whatever you else, guys. <laughs> whatever else, whatever else comes along you. with that. <laughs> cool. Um, so the sparring is a little bit more friendly now. He's uh, you guys are holding your own. He could still kick your ass, but this is now you guys are kind of he's actually kind of stepped back. And now he and uh, he and uh, Gillid and Angor are kind of like putting on their own little show and people are just applauding at these uh, epic battle moves at watching these two warriors basically just, uh, you know, go toe to toe with each other for, for a good half hour hour. Um, so, yeah, so you guys are at level five. Congratulations. Wow. All right. All Meanwhile, getting a club back at Venzo's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Play Lucky. that song, Lucky. Play that funky music, <laughs> Black music, Cat. Black Cat. <laughs> <laughs> Play that funky music, right? <laughs> uh, Love it. Uh, Lucky, you just decide to do your typical entrance. You go to the tree that, uh, you go to the fence and you hop the fence and jump into the tree and climb down the tree. And then I land doing a hero stance. You do the you do the three point stance, the three point heroes landing. <laughs> okay, you do that and you, and then you like really hurt your knee. You're like, this is stupid. <gasps> <laughs> Who lands like this? How <laughs> dare you? <laughs> Um, and you gotta, you gotta shake it off. <laughs> uh, he's already waiting for you, and he's sitting on uh, the stone bench that you've seen him sitting on before. Uh, he's got a little uh, tray set out, um, and on it has some some tea um, and some some fruit and some baked goods. We'll call them scones. Uh, <laughs> wait, what were they? Scones. Scones. <laughs> scones. <laughs> scones. Um, and he's good plucking at his loot, uh, and he sees you, and uh, he puts down his loot, and he picks up a one of the most beautiful uh, lutalelis you've ever seen. <gasps> and and he says, "Yes, after we last uh, after we last met, I uh, popped over to Shadaru and 
picked up this one at a nice music store I was familiar with from my days back there. And, and you know that Chateau is like way away away. <laughs> it's like almost on another continent away. So it's just popping in. Um, so he's got skills. He's got skills. So uh, says, "Welcome, sit, sit, sit." So you sit down, and you noticed that the uh, uh, bench is in front. And I don't know if you don't think you've noticed it before, but um, you have noticed there is a large stone in front of the bench with ivy and flowers growing on it, uh, and you can see carved into the stone the name Ilya Jasmine. So you know this is this is her grave, and this is where he spends most of his time. Um, so he is, uh, just plucking away. I mean, he's, has the feeling he's warming up, but his warm ups are like the most beautiful, arc, uh, arpeggios. I almost said archipelagos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, his, his, his warm ups are like the most beautiful arpeggios you've ever heard. And, and off of, uh, you've never quite heard anyone play a, a lutelele like this. So uh, he sits down and, so, teach me a song. Well, I did recently write a song about our adventure heading towards Sandhars. Just one little moment, and it happens to be a sing-along, so I hope you'll join me. Okay. Well. All right. So I'll say a line. Then you sing it back to me. Okay. Then we we sing the whole part, and then we do another part. You're going to love it. Ready? I'm sure I will. The other day. The other day. I met a bear. <laughs> I met a bear. A great big bear. <laughs> a great big bear. A way out there. A way out there. <laughs> The other day I met a bear. The other day I met a bear. A great big bear. A great big bear. Away out there. Uh, he walked toward me. He walked toward me. I walked toward him. I walked toward him. He splashed at me. He splashed at me. That jerk. Why? I mean, seriously. <laughs> why? Splash at me. <laughs> Roll a performance check, please. <laughs> yeah, 17. Nice. Um, he, he please laughs. repeat. He laughs because I like the ending. I like the ending. I'm going to roll a performance check for him. I love that Lucky. Uh, okay, like... okay, yeah. He uh, he matched your, your singing, you know. He, he was very good. I love that Lucky's so. like a music comedy bard. And... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like my song? Right. Lucky is the lost Concord. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a very entertaining song. I think you need to work the work the work on the lyrics a little bit. But, no, but... Uh, I think it was very entertaining. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a song I think you might like. Um, this isn't one necessarily about our adventures uh, that per se, but this was actually uh, taught to me by a tabaxi bard, but unlike yourself, uh, when we had the opportunity to travel through Clowder. Um, oh, so. my home. Yes, yes. Uh, so he proceeds to uh, start playing the, the lulalele, and he sings you a epic tale of the cat lord and how long, long ago the tabaxi were hunted and pestered by the orcs of Utvel uh, near what is now known as Clowder, and how the tabaxi finally uh, just were so desperate as to what to do about these orcs, they prayed to the cat lord. And the cat lord, with his mighty claws, carved two rivers from the sea 
into a point around Utvel, trapping the orcs within that triangle, within that delta. And then he stole uh, from the wild elf god Rilafane Rolithil, uh seeds from the Yurwood tree. And he planted those at the delta, on the other side of the delta. And where he planted those, large trees sprung out of the ground with great soaring canopies that intertwined and allowed the tabaxi to easily leap from one tree to the other. And big enough, the branches were big enough, they could make their homes in the trees and thus stay away from the orcs. And then to show his appreciation for the tabaxi and his love for his, his cat brethren, he chopped off his own tail and, and cut it into small morsel bites and fed it to the tabaxi. And the tabaxi grew large and stood on two feet and grew thumbs and became cunning and clever and intelligent, and thus were available, available uh, able to even more avoid the orcs and, more importantly, defend themselves when needed. And this is an epic soaring ballad. And the way he's playing it and the way he is singing it, uh, you are filled with such inspiration uh, that you feel like you have so much inspiration, you can give it to others. Uh, you are, as you might say, a font of inspiration, and which is now an ability you have, as well as your inspiration die. Now being D8, you too are at level five. So, and all the other things that come That's with that. That's how that story was amazing. <laughs> it was so beautiful. It was, thank you for sharing that with me. I looked over and Valmaya was like, enraptured eating french fries <laughs> <laughs> just, just enthralled I'm no no eating the little piece of cattail oh. yeah oh. Eating cat tail. <laughs> for the story not gonna lie i, I had, fun, I had fun coming up with that one <laughs> i love that you know those old tales it's always a little bit of gross i will never get over <laughs> the final verse of your song lucky why did he splash me? <laughs> what a jerk. I was coming up, I was like, I wonder what the next rhyme's gonna be. Like, he splashed me, I splashed him. But, <laughs> no. But... No. I'll see you came up with that in, like, three minutes. <laughs> yeah, on break. <laughs> well, it's partially old song that I turned into that, and that's as far as I could get. <laughs> well done. Well done. Oh, actually, give yourself an inspiration die for that song. I'm sorry, I forgot to say. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay. I'm excited to see how they get level five from Girls' Night. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Find out. We braid our horns, and that gives us that extra power. <laughs> uh, maybe I'm not far off with Girls' Night is looting and pillaging. Okay, <laughs> well, it could be. Yeah. It absolutely could be. Uh, okay, well, speaking of is Girls' it, Night... Is it appropriate if before I say goodbye to Venzo, I can give him a kiss on the cheek? Uh, and say thank you? No, it's you not, but are that. you still going to? <laughs> yes. Do you also give him like a dead mouse as a thank you present? <laughs> <laughs> Later, I don't have one on me. Well, you guys play for, you know, know that's not the end of the you guys, We can just take it as read that you guys play for some more. You trade songs and, and um, okay. but yes, when you say goodbye, you can give him a little... Well, Dead wait a second. Is this a? Is this a? I'm not gonna lick him. I was just gonna say, what kind of is this a kitty kiss? Or... <laughs> no. no, 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 just a little nose nuzzle. Okay, okay. And he reaches up and scratches you behind the ear a little bit. <laughs> okay. okay, sorry. Um, Girls night. Uh, <laughs> all right. So shortly after. Uh, the boys have left for their rendezvous. Uh, you three are in your common area. Um, and a knock comes at your door. Come in. <laughs> the door opens and in walks Kirna carrying a uh, large wicker basket with a, like a tea towel, like a large tea towel over it, draped over it. And she walks in and she puts it on the table and uh, she takes it off and she uh, pulls out 
some bottles of what looked like a bubbly liquid and some fresh oranges and just says, good morning, girls. And basically in front of you starts making mimosas. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, she looks at the three of you. So she hands you each a mimosa and she holds up her glass and says, two men. They're fucking useless. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> you got down the uh, down the mimosas and says, or drinks and starts making some more. And she goes, so tell me, what do you all think of Winter and Kelwyn? And lucky. No, no, no. Don't be shy. <laughs> Just between us girls. <laughs> uh, they're, they're <laughs> it's almost right. like you think they're listening. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are we ta what are we talking here? Like, like strengths, abilities? There are certainly uh, talents. I think I'm so? looking more for... Swole. Trustworthy, reliable. Well, I mean, Kellen's kind of a a grumpy asshole at times, but you know he seems to get the job done. Well, you know, I'm used to being in a party with a non-grumpy asshole. <laughs> I never okay. got the feeling that we couldn't trust them. Yeah, I mean, I haven't That's been good. with the party as long as everyone else, but my first impressions seem everyone has good intentions. Okay. Worthy, I would good. assume, yes. Good. Because I need your help. Um, Go on. And sure. I think I can only depend on you. Because, well, men, they have good intentions, but... You know, once once the fun is gone out of something, they just seem to want to go retire and just sow their wild oats and spend their money. And they don't have a feeling for the big picture. And I need someone who's in for the big picture. And what is the big picture? That's why you're all here. Angor can think it was his idea to invite Kelwyn. Winter can think, or, or uh, Gillid can think it was his idea to invent, invite Winter. I put those ideas in their head. Quickest way to get a guy to do something, make him think it was their idea. Like Inception? <laughs> <laughs> no, <Wow>. no. <laughs> dropping hints, <laughs> dropping hints, you know, saying, oh, I hear this is happening. You should, Benzo, maybe you should talk to Angor about this young man his son knew. Or Gilead, when was the last time you reached out to Winter? Or scried on Winter? I mean, I know you have kept that life part of your, but isn't it maybe now a good time with this opportunity coming up? Maybe, maybe that's something you should think about wasn't i'm not sure they would have you know they have good intentions oh yes i've always meant to reach out to winter i just haven't gotten to it yet and oh well i couldn't be i don't want to bother kelwin he must still be feeling grief you know excuses to put off the unpleasantness they can't face the important things because they'd rather just have fun which i get it i mean i traveled with them for a while but you know, when my quest took me where it wasn't going to be as fun, they stopped following. And that's why I called for you three. You may not know I called for you, but Ula, we have a friend in common. The Blessed Neralis. Yes. I'm still intrigued by what you told me last time we saw each other before you were wasted. 
Uh, <laughs> I can't claim I wasn't wasted then. We started drinking early. Fair, fair. But um, I, so will you call for us to be sort of the brains behind the group? It seems like that's kind no, of... No, not the brains. Was, not that? the brains. Not the brains. Although you are, I would not put that past you. No, I need someone dependable. Here's the deal. The gods are aligning. The gods are teaming up. They're taking sides. I don't know why. I've been chasing this clue for a hundred years. Something's coming. Not tomorrow. Maybe not even in a year. Maybe not even five. But something is coming and we're going to need warriors. I think I could rally Angor and Gilead to my side if I need when I need them. But we'll need more. So when I heard about Ovin's little adventure here, I knew this was the perfect opportunity to put together a younger, capable adventuring party and one that could train for years or months at least, possibly years. And once you have rid the arid valley of all of its dangers and gone on other adventures or missions, Oven sees fit to send you on, or maybe you do it on your own. Eventually, you will be high enough caliber warriors to face the real threats that come. I'm not talking about centaurs and bullets. I'm talking about facing the gods themselves. The gods are aligning. I know Neralis Anilor and Kelimvor have already aligned, and they've aligned with Saloon. Possibly ill mater. And I know you were given to me by Neralis. She is the one who told me about you. He's also the one that told me about Nikoya and Valmaya, though I don't know why. Hmm. I know they worship the Elder Gods, but the Elder Gods aren't necessarily good. But also, their motives are largely unknown. They're separated from our reality. Their, their decisions don't make sense. They could be aligning with the good God, the right gods, the gods of life. They could be aligning with the gods of death and darkness. Uh, they could have their own. They could have their own agendas in mind. But all I know is I trust Neralis. I trust Kelimvor. And they told me I could trust them and you. And what I need to know is if Ano Ula, you serve Neralis, and if she calls you, you will come. What I need to know is will Nikoya and Velmaya be willing to fight by your side when the going gets very rough? Well, guys. Uh, so what I'm hearing is <laughs> you manipulated a group of people into doing what you want. Maybe, maybe for a Not higher. Not to what purpose. I want. What needs to be done? And I'll admit, there's some selfishness. I would like to have a hand in possibly our group's legacy. We did a lot of good in the world, but there was things we didn't finish and that I would like to see finished, but I can't do it on my own. I've got other things to do. I'm alone and quite frankly, too old. But you, you have the makings of something special. You could finish the works we never could. And once finishing those, maybe, maybe save the world. Hmm. And Girls I do- night. <laughs> yeah, this ain't no this ain't no spa day. There's not enough mimos mimosas for this. I do have I do have gifts. Gifts given from to to me to give to you. Like money? No. <laughs> she walks forward towards you, uh Nikoya and Valmaya and places her hands on your shoulders. It's actually a Mary closes Kate her party. eyes and mutters <laughs> something <laughs> under her breath. 
<laughs> and now, as tieflings who are beholden to an ancient old one, a little elder one, you know, let's say you don't have the most restful sleeps ever. You're constantly have a busy brain and are constantly, it's almost like you're seeking knowledge from a far off point. And after she finishes muttering these words, it suddenly feels like the knowledge you have been seeking recently. You have an epiphany and it comes, you don't necessarily know exactly what that is, but you feel like you have room for it now in your soul, in your minds. Uh, and you each level up to level five and you now have an extra, uh, have an extra spell and an extra, what is it? An extra, oh, an extra invocation. Who? Yep. Yes, we do. So yes, you get an extra spell, an extra spell and an extra invocation. Uh, and whatever else comes with level three, or level five, excuse me. And Ula. <laughs> She she talks to you and 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 you guys just start talking shop about being a cleric and being a cleric for uh, uh, Neralis and you start trading you know tales of what you can and can't do and uh, she teaches you uh, the ability to destroy undead so you now have that ability to destroy undead welcome to level five also and she Aww. leaves you with this one parting thought. Or thing she goes. So really, the only thing I can't figure out about the six of you is what's up with the Tabaxi. <laughs> he was not in my plans. I had no visions. I had no inkling. I didn't even. I haven't thought of Tabaxis for decades since we were last in Clowder. And suddenly, to much to my surprise, a tabaxi enters Venzo's garden yesterday. Perhaps and you're being manipulated by something. Maybe. Maybe. But I do know this. The Cat Lord is fickle. The Cat Lord will show great interest in something for a while. And then instantly, suddenly, not care and walk away. Fantastic. Be careful. Be you careful of the tabaxi. What a I, don't think he will I don't think he'll turn on you. But I'm not sure he'll be with you when you need him most. <laughs> like the avatar. But then again, I just don't know. The cat lord. Maybe even stranger than the elder ones themselves. I took was right here. And that's where we'll call right it a in. night. Welcome to level five. Woo -hoo. <laughs> Woo -hoo. How dare you? <laughs> well done, Mr. Dungeon. <laughs> Mr. Dungeon. Dungeon. Level five. Level five. I, uh, I like these like more RP leveling things. I don't know how you'll yeah. do it for every level, but this was a special Yeah, level. I don't think I'll do it for every level. It, this, this one is pretty easy. It was pretty easy ways to, to do level it Level five is a big level, too. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I may not do it, but yeah, I do oh, like fuck. incorporating. It always did seem to me odd that's like, hey, you woke up and suddenly you know all these spells. <laughs> or you know all this, you have all these more fighting skills. So it makes sense to have more you know, areas of training or uh, just for me anyway. So I like that. So anyway uh thank you all for watching hope you enjoyed it uh we'll be well it doesn't matter if you're watching this anyway but we'll be posting <laughs> online when it's up. uh if you want to listen to us as a podcast we are this is available the audio only is available on our podcast channel which you can get to at rescuebydragons.com and people have turned it off by now anyway so i'll just stop <laughs> but thank you all for watching and uh hopefully see you next week goodbye viewer all right Check out our only fan. Viewer. <laughs> <laughs>